the word that is most often used to describe a psychopath is someone who is cold-blooded. Mm, mm-hmm. Cold-blooded is something that we often think of means like they'll murder you in cold blood. Yeah. What cold-blooded really means is that they don't get heated. They don't get passionate. Mm. They don't get excited. They don't get angry. They don't have that hot blood that makes you have a temper. Instead, they're always very detached. That's what cold-blooded means. From that cold-blooded position, they can literally read your patterns of behavior because they don't get distracted by all the emotions that you and I get distracted by that keep us from seeing a pattern. Wow, would they? Would it be harder to interrogate someone like that because they're not showing um, emotions and ebbs and flows? It's harder to interrogate them on an emotional basis, mm. yes, because they're very stable in their emotions. Compared to a sociopath, right, psychopath and sociopath, both antisocial personality disorder, sociopaths have very dynamic ranges of emotions. Narcissists have very dynamic ranges mm. of emotions. So the good news for women is if you're dealing with a partner who can flip a switch on their emotions, you're not dealing with a psychopath. Even though a lot of times, like I know for men, when men see women go from extremely happy to extremely angry, we're like, oh my God, you're a psycho. Mm. It's actually exactly the opposite. The psycho is the person who never goes through those extremes. Mm. Somebody who goes through those extremes is the definition of the opposite of a psychopath. So when you're interrogating or when you're questioning somebody and you see that very stable, detached, emotional foundation, you know that you're dealing with somebody who's on that spectrum of antisocial personality disorder. Mm. Fascinating. I've got a few more cases that I'd love to take you through, but yeah. before we actually do, one thing I've always wondered is, why are women so obsessed with true crime and serial killers? <laughs> So I think there's a couple of reasons there, right? I think that it's not just women, first of all. Men also love true crime. Mm. But there's a difference in perspective. I think when men look at true crime, they're putting themselves in the shoes of the detective trying to solve the crime. Mm. And a lot of times when women look at true crime, they're putting themselves in the shoes of the victim of the crime. You're so right. So men are like, how would I, how would I have saved this woman? And the women are like, how do I never become that woman, right? Two different points of view on the same true crime case. Mm. But I think that, uh, that the obsession with true crime, first of all, it's a very Western obsession. It doesn't really exist in the East. Interesting. It doesn't really exist as an entertainment format in most other parts of the world, right? It's something that really only exists in, or prim predominantly exists in wealthy Western society, Europe, the United States, Canada, and it's because we have the space and the kind of society where criminal activity is, is reduced. We out, if you think about it practically, we outsource our security. Who's responsible for your safety? The police. For a second, I was gonna say my husband. <laughs> outsourced. Mm -hmm. In reality, it should be you. If you ask mm. any Indian woman in Mumbai who's responsible for her safety, she will be like, oh. I am. If you ask a Pakistani woman who's responsible for your safety, I am. Right? It's my job to keep myself safe because everybody else is a criminal and you know they, they've been raised that way from their whole life mm. because literally crime is a way of life in, in most parts of the world. But in Western society, the police keep us safe. We expect all people to follow rule of law and, and have order in their lives. So when we come across these ideas of serial killers who are exceptions to that rule and they're such effective ex exceptions to the rule that they don't just kill once. They kill multiple times without being discovered, without being caught. Sometimes even if they are caught, they get off because the evidence or the legal structure or something happened and, and the evidence can't be held against them. So it becomes this, this threat, this wolf out there in, in the hills that we can't ever really see. Fresh sun.